Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to break down step by step how to follow along so that you can produce a painting like this and amaze yourself. Okay, welcome to another of my iPad painting tutorials. And as I said in the intro, I'm going to break this down into easy to follow steps. Now I am using an iPad with the app Procreate, but I don't see any reason why you couldn't use a different app on a different tablet and still find a way of achieving a very similar success. But as such, I am using the app Procreate and within the app, I've opened one of their default A4 canvases, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 DPI. And the color profile is the sRGB. It's the code that ends in 2.1 and it's here in the default options within Procreate again. In terms of the brushes, I'm only going to use the brushes that come free within the app Procreate. And the first brush I'm going to be using is the airbrushing soft brush. Possibly I'll use the medium brush as well. Within artistic, I'm going to be using an amended version of the Aurora brush. And I will show you how to do that when we come to that point in the tutorial. Again, maybe an amended version of the Leatherwood brush. And again, we'll also talk you through that step by step. And maybe within sketching, I'll use something like the 6B pencil, but we'll see as we get there. In terms of the colors, I have pre-selected a color palette and each of these colors has a code that is linked to it. And that's called a hexadecimal code. Go to the value section within the color options. You can type the codes in one at a time and press enter. The color appears up here and you can just tap it into this area. All of the codes for this palette are listed down in the video description, but also next to them, is a link that takes you to my Patreon page and to save you the time, you can download the whole color file for free. And with all of that said and done, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do on layer one, go to my colors, first color on the top row. I'm just gonna drag to flood fill into that area. And now we've got rid of the white background. I'm gonna stay on the same layer. I'm gonna go to my brushes, airbrushing, soft brush. I'm gonna put the brush size to around 10%. 100% opacity, go back to my colors. I'm gonna choose this lighter color, which is the second color on the top row. And just very simply, I'm gonna do a band of that at the top. If you just skimmed it and missed it a little bit, pull it up. Then I'm gonna to go to these options, choose the adjustments, Gaussian blur. And I'm gonna blur that across pretty substantially to about the 40%. And then I'm gonna create a new layer to so go to the layer option, click the plus symbol, layer two, Go back to my colors. I'm going to go to the third color this time. I'm going to reduce the size of the brush to about 7%, still at the 100% opacity. And just where this darker color starts to fade in, we're going to do a band of this all the way across. It doesn't have to be terribly straight, but if you do hold it, it will snap to a straight line anyway. Then we're going to go to the adjustments again, Gaussian blur again. We're going to blur that in to about the 30%. Then I'm going to just to keep things simple, we're going to take that layer and merge it down. So we've still only got one layer. Okay, we're going to create a new layer again, layer two. I'm going to use the fourth color on the top row. Still with the soft brush, same brush. We're going to have it at 5% size and 100% opacity. And again, we're just going to draw a line across. It doesn't really matter if it's not straight. Adjustments, Gaussian blur. Blur that in, probably a little less, to about the 25%. And again, we could just merge that down. Just reduces the number of layers that we've got operating at any one time. But we will create another layer. Go back to our colors. We're going to back step to the third color this time. Still with the soft brush, but we're going to turn it down. It's about 3% size and about 15% opacity. And I'm just going to lightly start to tap in some textures that just run along the, crop, the top of this canvas area, allowing them to sort of move up and down a little bit, just taps and they're very light and they're very soft. They're just a really subtle detail, but we'll add them in there anyway. So I'm allowing them to sort of scatter in there. Some raised up a little bit, some going down a little bit. We'll then turn it up 4% and maybe do something similar again. Doesn't have to be exactly similar. It could be more stretched out shapes and then maybe come down into this section and maybe even more elongated sort of bands of cloud in here as well. We just want some texture in that background. We don't want it to be too flat. I'm going to create a new layer, layer three, go back to my colors. I'm going to use this white 
I'm going to go to the medium brush with an airbrushing. I'm going to set the size not too massive, maybe about 7%, 100% opacity. I'm going to choose the place for the sun. I'm going to do it according to the kind of composition rules of rules of thirds. So I'm going to do it roughly about a third of the way in, but somewhere about there. Tap it a few times until you're happy with your sun. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments, bloom. I'm going to slide that across and that's just going to amplify that. And I think that works better. I'm going to create a layer on top, but this time I'm going to tap on the little end symbol that's there. I'm going to change the blend mode from normal by scrolling down to add. And that changes the little end to an A. I'm then going to go for this red color, which seems incredibly vibrant, which it is. I'm going to use that with this soft brush within hair brushing again. I'm going to have it initially quite big at around 6% and really low on the opacity at around 5%. And we're just going to start introducing its influence into this scene. Now you can see it, it pretty much straight away adds a really nice glow and I'm concentrating it more around the, the sun, allowing it to darken off towards the edges a little bit, put a little bit above. In fact, we could even increase the size from six, maybe about 10%. We've been a little bit cautious. We can really go for it a bit more, increase its influence a little bit higher or a little bit wider too. Then we can turn it back down 2%. Maybe we can just subtly having it interact with some of these clouds that we've already put in there. Not too much, just sort of intermingled with them. You don't need to overdo that at all. There's some that cut across, just blends in with some of the textures we've already got. Bring it a little bit further down maybe, just skimming along the top. Some of these areas, we don't want to bring it too bright in this area. We can ramp it up where the sun is. Stay on the same layer, but we're going to change to the orange, put it back up, try at the 10%, still at the 5% opacity, and we'll just start to build in some of this orange to surround the sun. Just expand a sort of circling around and just circle that sun in there a little bit. Then we can try again with the yellow. Same settings, don't change it. Just lightly start to circle that in. It just expands it. A little bit more. I'm really allowing the Apple Pencil to skim the surface there so you're not overdoing it. I'll perhaps create another layer on top, go back to the red, still the same brush, down to maybe 3% size, 5% opacity and change to the same blend mode, add blend mode. Really doesn't have the same impact unless you do that and again I'm just expanding that in a little bit. Now, if, like me, you feel like the sun is just a little bit too big, easily fixed. We can go back to layer three, we go to the transform, select the uniform, otherwise it might distort it into a ellipse. And then we could just, from the corner, pinch it in a little bit, reposition it so it still makes sense and it's kind of central. And I think that's just working a little bit better for the overall scene. I'll probably go back and add a bit more brightness to that later, but for now, I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna start tackling the ground details. Top layer and then create a new layer. So layer six, go back to my colors. I'm going to use the first color on the middle row. With the soft brush, really quite straightforward today's brushes. 5% size, 100% opacity. And then just at the bottom, I'm going to do a line of this across. And again, I don't really want it to be a straight line, so that's fine. Adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we will blur that in to about the 15%. Then back in with the same brush, 10%. And just underneath that, I can bring everything we've got underneath just carefully towards the edge. We don't want to ruin that top edge. Quite like the way it just soft focuses, blends in the top area. I think that really not works nicely. So let's just constrain filling the rest of this in. Turn it down and just fix any little anomalies if they're not quite right. I'm going to create a new layer on top. Go back to my colors. I've got a slightly lighter green, which I'm going to use. Still with the soft brush, turn it down, 2% size. Not quite as strong, so maybe about 30. And then I'm just going to start introducing upward movements with this color. But we're going to turn the size of that down even more to the lower part of 2%. There's quite a range within the same percentage. We're allowing it just to create almost like blades of grass. We don't want them to be particularly in focus. And we don't want them to go too high up 
above that blurred line we've created as well. I'm changing direction a little bit, so sometimes they're going that way, sometimes that way. Not completely at that angle, they're still majority upright, so just a little bit leaning that way, and just creating almost like they're, they're generally upwards, but the, the wind is just pushing them left and right a little bit. Do that all the way across, but not significant and go above that horizon line. You could even go to that layer and duplicate it, transform, flip it horizontally, and you can move it perhaps a little bit lower down, find a place where it just seems to amplify it, but not too much. Maybe even go to the top version, merge down, so it's all on one layer again. Quite a subtle detail, but there in the background, it's going to give you that sense of depth. I think it's important. On the same layer, we're going to go to the third color. Same brush, 2% size still, but lower. It's around 10%. And I'm just going to, in fact, a little bit higher perhaps, Let's be a bit braver, 15%, and just create some mottled kind of points that cut across. And I suppose these are the flowers that are in the distance. So I'm catching the light a little bit, but I'm going to be more subdued than the ones that are going to be more foreground. Do another pass across. I'll have to come a little bit lower down in places too, but not too significantly. Just a few points. If there's any anomalies of green that you don't like, go to the eraser. Something like a soft brush. Whoops, don't think I actually selected that. Try again. Have it a small size, 50% strength, and you can just reduce anything that is too significant back a little bit. Just tap it away. It really just, just make itself a little bit too apparent and just bat it back down a little bit. There you go. Altogether, we're going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur it in a little bit maybe sort of 3%, just to soften it back. We're gonna go and create a new layer, layer eight, and we're gonna go for the third from the right this time. Maybe we'll change brush. We'll go for the sketching 6B pencil, 100% size, 40% opacity, and we're just gonna create similar kind of textures that we did in the background, but this is gonna be more prominent. We will blur it in, but still, they're going to be no, more noticeable, significantly so than, more so than the background ones. So the same principle, we're not going to do things that are too dramatically angled, but create an X shape when they overlap. We want them to be pretty much upright, but just tilting a little bit left and right, and even overlapping. We'll go all the way across again. It's a little bit lower than the initial textures, but they do overlap as well. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a general sense for the, the direction too. Perhaps more of them lean in a certain way. So if you want to emphasize a directionality for the general, then perhaps just go over it and just emphasize that more than the other direction. And that's absolutely fine. Perhaps the wind tends to blow in our scene a little bit more in one direction than the other. Or they lean towards the light in one way more than the other as well. We can go back to our colors. Next green, so second from the right, and a little bit lower down. We're just going to have some more. We're just creating a real density of these green textures. And then maybe the next one, which is significantly lighter, and perhaps I'll just bring this further down. I can't take the brush any bigger. It doesn't really matter. We're going to blur this in anyway, and then we'll have another go over the top. Slightly fewer of these ones because they're just a bit, well, they're significantly more prominent. We don't want them to overpower everything. We'll just do one pass that goes across, something like that. Then on that layer, we're going to go adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we're going to blur that in to about the 5%. I'm going to create a new layer. And I want to start create some extra noise now in the, in the scene, in the landscape. So I'm going to do more of the, the same shapes, but I'm also going to introduce some different things. And I want it to be slightly chaotic. I don't need to get very specific, just texture. We're going to go to the artistic brushes. I'm going to try the leatherwood brush. I'm going to reset it initially to show you how I'm going to amend it. So tap on it again. And the spacing is normally at 17%, and I want it to be a lot more. I want it to be more about 45%. I'll introduce some jitter so it's a bit more random, put that up to 80%. And in terms of the grain, I don't want it to have a grain at all. It has naturally like a fabric texture. I'm gonna turn the scale to zero or none. 
then still with these greens I also go back to the first green with this brush maybe around 4% size slightly back from 100% 80% should do and then as you can see I've started to just bring in a hint of this texture here now you don't need to be particularly deliberate with this and you don't want to do too much of it because it's just going to overpower we don't want it to be more significant than the blades of grass and the stems for the flowers but we want it to have its influence so I'm going to try the next color as well which isn't overly different so we'll go for the more vibrant one perhaps I'm just going to add another green and yeah maybe another green in there as well just to add some really kind of different varieties of green they'll be in the color palette they'll be in the codes list that are down in the description or if you downloaded the file they'll always have been there for you I'm just adding them as I go a little bit here now I'm going to increase the size up to five percent and I'm just going to introduce see higher actually put it eight percent some of these in the mix that's a really strong vibrant green that so again we don't want too much of that backward step so second from the right this time turn it down play around with the size so we'll try it down at the three percent these are just helping with the sense of leaves and greenery and texture and perhaps like the layer we also need to go to the Gaussian blur blur it in so it's not too overbearing put it maybe around the four percent go for a layer on top going with the sketching 6b pencil 100% size 40% opacity and again we're going to go in with some of these new greens in fact we'll go in for the second from the right and we're just going to allow that to cut in front of kind of make sense of some more of these details that we've just been adding these textures press on a bit more you get bolder shapes and details or you can just allow them to stop where some of the green is take it up to there and allow it to stop and then it it makes a bit more sense of these we can allow it to go further now in addition to these light colors we do have dark greens at the front so the first green we could intermingle some darker colors in here too to cut across and vary it up a little bit it doesn't make sense that everything would be light you're obviously going to get some things that are darker and just create almost like silhouettes that cut in front but we're just building up this texture the texture is pretty much the whole of this image once you get past the sky and that center horizon the rest is just texture and light and color so it is important we get these textures in spend the time on them enjoy them we'll go for the most vibrant one at the end use this sparingly because it is compared to everything else pretty strong and vibrant maybe a backward step to the next green again a bit more of this and then backward step again third from the right all those in there maybe sing across a little bit okay and we're going to go to adjustments Gaussian blur blur it in again four percent okay we're going to create a new layer on top and we're, we're getting to that point now if we don't start adding the flowers then it's not going to make much sense so back to our brushes we're going to go to the artistic aurora brush now reset it and you can see it looks quite different so we're going to tap on it go to the spacing naturally it's all clumped together so we want to significantly space it out i would say at around the 75 percent introduce some jitter so we can put that up to about 50. the most important thing we want to change is the color dynamic naturally it's really quite high at 16 on the hue we want to turn that down to about three go to our colors and we've got all these colors at the bottom that are going to be what we're going to use so we'll go for the first color turn it down to about three percent not quite 100 percent about 90 should do and then i'm just going to use it quite sparingly we don't want to do it in a line because you will get this kind of regular pattern almost so don't do that tap it in and we've got an area here not quite as out of focus as the very distant ones but these aren't going to be the most prominent ones but they need to be there so perhaps three percent is a little bit timid so we will put it back up to the four percent and then we're just going to tap these in a little bit leave gaps too we don't want to over 
fill. Not every area anyway. You might get some areas where it gets really busy and you allow them to pile up a little bit, but for the most part, gaps are gonna be really important too. So that's the smattering for that real kind of, not quite very distant, but middle distance. And again, we're gonna rely upon the Gaussian blur. So adjustments, Gaussian blur. Blur it in, not too massively, maybe about 3%. That does quite a lot of the work for us. Create a new layer. Go back to our colors. Slightly lighter color, the second color on the bottom row. Just up to the top end of 4%, just before, before it comes 5. Now let's go for it, let's go for the 5. And it's a much lighter color. It's not quite the, the vivid orange that I want it to be. So I'm not going to use too much of this, but I'm just going to have a hint of it. I'll just tap it into a few places, just so you get some real variety of light and hue, tone. Not too much of that. Again, adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it in, 3%. Perhaps we'll take those two and merge them down. So take the top one, merge down to all the flowers, and now we'll one layer again. Create a new layer above. So we're back on layer 12, back to our colors. And now we're going for something much warmer, the third color. 5% size still. And this is going to be the base for the majority of the rest of the flowers now, in terms of color anyway. Now, when you come to some of the foreground ones, if you wanted to spend some time really refining some of these flowers, and I absolutely encourage that, but we're just we're trying to create almost more like an impressionistic image here in this tutorial. You can double up on some areas, just keep tapping over it, and you create nice little clusters. There's just enough hue change and variability still left in this brush. Create a really nice complexity of different oranges. It still works. Clap them to really build up in some areas. We'll create a new layer, layer 13, and we're going to put the, the size up really significantly to about 18%. And I'm just going to do few taps of this to represent really foreground they're going to be out of focus but the flowers that are really rammed up in our face here the viewer something like this then obviously we're going to need to blur them out so gaussian blur blur them well about 15 percent i think works perhaps we could take that and actually adjustment hue saturation and brightness and just turn the brightness of them down a little bit too they're a little bit too vibrant perhaps perhaps they should be subdued on the saturation just a touch don't want them to overpower so put 45 on the brightness 40 on the saturation we can always go in and just amend that slightly which i will do then just to maybe tweak that a little bit i'm going to go onto the layer put on alpha lock and you'll see a little checkerboard pattern appear then with the airbrushing soft brush i'm going to go to a lighter color Force color, put it at around 5% size, but really low, it's around 5% opacity. And I can just go in now and just add a little bit of lightness coming in to some areas of the ones that we've just darkened up and subdued. You know, we can more manually control that, perhaps even turn that down and really focus where we want that to be. Just catching the light, perhaps on some of the edges. It's really out of focus, so you don't need to get into any heavy detail, obviously. We're just varying that up a little bit. Back a layer to layer 12. Back with the artistic Aurora brush. Back with that main orange we're using. So the third on the bottom row. Definitely send it back down. So maybe about 6% size this time. But now let's go bigger. Because we can get some here that are not quite the out of focus ones. We're not going to be as out of focus anyway. But they're going to be slightly more obscured. Now this brush varies if you press on lightly or if you press on hard. So again, that's creating a little bit of variation too. I'm kind of alternating. Sometimes if I just want to get some smaller bits in there, I'm pressing more lightly. Otherwise I want to be more dramatic and pressing more. Turn it back down, 4% size. Feel like I can just tap in a few a little bit more for concentration in this area needs a bit more i can also go in with something like the airbrushing soft brush maybe the medium brush 
2% size, again, 90% opacity, it's just lower under 2%. And I'm not entirely limited to the texture of the brush that I've been using. I can actually control it, obviously. And I still want it to have that kind of scattered, random look, but if I feel like, you know, there's some areas where I just want to get one or two extra shapes in, but I don't want to use the random brush because I want to put it exactly in a certain place, then I can go in and do that with the brush. Again, I'm not getting bogged down in detail. Okay, on that whole layer, I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, I'll just blur it in again. It's about 3% this time. I'm going to go to the layer, and again, I'm going to use the lock. I'm going to go to the perhaps this color, which is third from the right, with the soft brush. Oh, I need to change it back to the soft brush with an airbrushing. 5% size, 10% opacity, and I can just start to build in a lighter, more vibrant look for the ones that are very much more where the sun is as well. So we're going to have a channel or a section here that is going to be more significantly affected by the sun compared to things just on the peripheral. So I'm just going to ramp up the effect of the ones in this area a little bit more. And perhaps we'll just go for this, which is really quite vibrant. Second from the right. Perhaps you just need to go a bit more sparingly with this. But again, we're going to add that in. I'm going to create another layer on top of layer 12 and I'm going to put on clipping mask which links it now to everything on that flower layer which means anything that adds to this layer is going to be restricted and turn the saturation up it's only going to add anything within the flower shapes too so it's on a separate layer so it acts very much like the alpha lock but it is on a separate layer so I'm not going to have it that significantly I'm going to have it maybe about 15% strength lowest end of 2% size and then maybe just at the top edges of some of these flowers i'm going to have it catching the light a little bit more i can really control it towards the top let's just go for it let's put it up to like 25. we could just really focus narrow our attention into the top shapes or top edge of some of these shapes a little bit more again i'm not really looking to get overly detailed on these flowers it is more about the, the texture and the effect but doesn't stop us going in there just a hint and giving the suggestion that maybe the top edge of some of these flowers are catching the light a little bit okay back onto layer 12 with the soft brush with an airbrushing i'm going to go for this vibrant orange third from the right four percent size only five percent opacity and again i just want to let's just ramp up some of this more vibrant color in places too don't want anywhere to look too dull. I want it more focused in the center of the vibrant colors, but I don't want it to be too dull off from the peripheral either. Perhaps with that layer, we're just going to go back to the turn off the alpha lock, go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur. Maybe just blur it in slightly more, another three percent. I think it just softens it a little bit better. I think I quite like go. Back to layer 13, that had that. Out of focus, flowers. Soft brush again, go for a lighter colour. Maybe the colour at the very end of the bottom row. 4% size, 5% opacity. Maybe just, that was good, bigger. 10% size. Just, yeah, increase the light in one or two of these areas too. I do think that some of the grass and the green is a little bit strong, so let's go back. Layer 9, for example. Tap on the end, turn it down a hint, 80%. Let's check another one. Layer 10, a bit strong, turn it down, 80%. I think it just finds its balance a little bit better sometimes when you tweak those layers. I'm going to go to the layer 13. I'm actually going to slide and duplicate it. And again, I think that just ramps it up. I think that improves the look of it. It makes it just a bit more prominent. It was a bit too, I don't know, it just disappeared a little bit too much. I think that's working better. So we can tap and merge that down. So again, it's just on one layer. Let's simplify the whole image. So we've got layer 14. Let's merge that down with layer 12. Perhaps go to layer 12. We could even slide and duplicate that. And again, that has just significantly ramped it up. 
I think it probably worked better for it. Tap, merge it down so again it's all on one layer. Where's layer 11? It's subtle. Let's slide and duplicate that. Let's ramp that up. So now it's double the amount, more prominent. Tap, merge down, and there it's on, on one layer again. I think I'd like to go to the top layer, create a new layer on top of that, change the blend mode from normal to add, and I'm going to go in with the soft brush, set really big, 60% size. Right, now let's go 70. And we'll go in with the red on the end of the top row. I'm only having it at 5% opacity, so it shouldn't matter. I'm going to tap the sun a couple of times, and it's just bringing in a glow to that whole area. Reduce it down, 50% size, a couple of taps on the sun, 30% size, a couple more taps, and that's just bringing a general glow in. And you'll see the difference if I remove the layer now. It's bringing a lot of that warmth into the overall scene and works better, I feel. But we'll do similar again with the orange top row. 30% size, tap it a couple of times there, maybe 50% a couple of times, maybe even down 10% just to really get that really nice blending of the sun in. Go to the yellow this time, and again, we want to blend that sun in, so tap it in a few times, turn it up to 15. I don't want this to extend too much, maybe up to 20. Just tap a couple of times for the 20. And if we think it's just starting to create some Two obvious rings, we can go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur it in a touch. I'll put it up to 10% blur, and on that basis, I'm probably going to continue to bring it in. So 15% with the yellow, and I'm just going to bring it a little bit further down into this area, extend that yellow glow in a little bit more down into here, circle it in 15% size still. So we do have to circle it in a little bit. That's fine. Go in with the red as well. I'm going to create a new layer. Again, change the blend mode to add. I'm going to go in with the yellow again on this new layer. 2% size, 10% strength, which is quite strong for this yellow. And again, we can just go over some of these flowers just to, because they're in the line of the sun there, just ramp them up a little bit. I would probably preserve this mainly for this area. Well, this has really quite dramatically changed the look of the piece. But if you're not convinced, then on that layer, you could always go to the tap on the A and you've got the ability to change the strength, the opacity of that new addition. And you can keep it at the 100% or you could dial it back a little bit, find the balance wherever you think it works best. So it could be subtle, non-existent or really dramatic and go for it. Perhaps I'll dial it back a little bit. We'll put it back to the 80%. So find a little extra details here and there, just to create a little bit more sense of random so that it doesn't become too monotonous over in this edge. Perhaps just finishing touch. I'm gonna to go to layer nine, duplicate that, bring it, down further in I think we need more of it maybe change the scale up a little bit just needs to be a little bit more down here as well looks a bit empty and doesn't have enough texture in there I'm just going to add another version in there and I think that balances that out a little bit better perhaps we can blur it in a little bit more causing blur blur that in five percent and there we go okay I'm not entirely happy with this just a slight amendment here at the end of the video so what I've decided to do is take that layer at the top that has the blend mode set to add and dial it back to 30%. Tap on the layer or slide, duplicate it. And on the bottom version, I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay, but I'm going to put the opacity of the overlay layer up to 100% to max. So you can see that the add layer is necessary but without it, it looks a bit bleached out and a bit desaturated. Now you can play around with the adjustments on here, find the point at which you think is best. Again, you could dial it back, put it somewhere slightly less than max on the overlay layer, maybe 90%. And it doesn't need to be very strong on the add layer. Otherwise it just kind of bleaches it out again. So I'm going to put that down to about 30. And yeah, I think that overall gets the balance just about right. 
Okay, I'm going to leave this painting here at this point. If you've enjoyed following along, then I would recommend that you try my poppy field painting tutorial as well. It's got a similar vibe, similar kind of simplicity of construction. And if you do have a go at any of my paintings, then do share them with me and you'll find all my social media links down in the video description. Thanks so much for watching. I shall catch you back here soon. Bye for now.